It does. <laughs> So, you know, in other words, like, the relief tells you about the problem. Just like when I came into recovery the first day, first meeting I ever came to, you know, I'm, I'm in a form of recovery called AA. And I was like 20, over 24 years ago. And one of the first experiences I had in that meeting was I felt a little hope, I guess you'd call that, and it allowed me to feel how hopeless I was, yeah? Until I reached that point of hope, I couldn't really feel the hopelessness because my mind wouldn't allow it, yeah? It was a threat to its survival. But I was an incredible level of hopelessness, but I was the last one who would know, know it, yeah? But as soon as I got hope, it affords me the opportunity to sense how hopeless I was. So the, in a way, you almost, you know the, you know the problem by its solution. So when you get relief, it's like if you had a, a rash on your skin and you didn't know what it was, and you tried a lot of ointments, and then one ointment worked, and then you'd read the, the, you know, the tube, and it says, this is for psoriasis. You probably had psoriasis. Yeah? You didn't know, but once you got the relief from it, and then you say, oh, there, it was psoriasis. Yeah? So <clears throat> this is sort of like that. In the sense of, from the, uh, the view of the solution, there is no problem. Yeah? From the view of the solution, there is no problem. That's the working of the solution. Because if there is no problem, uh, there's no need to get out of it, yeah? You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're not in somewhere, then there's no need to get out. The assumption is we're, we're driven or we're seeking, which is sort of like a, there's a drive to get out, but we ne never really stop and question, are we really in, you know? Are we in what we're really hell-bent on of getting out of? You know? Just sort of like the same thing with the moment. There's a lot of books that, I don't know if they still come out, but there was a lot of books about how to be in the moment, yeah? And how to really, really be in the moment, you know? In the fourth edition, how to really, really <laughs> turbocharge the moment. But my sense is you can't be out of the moment, yeah? There isn't you in a moment. If there was you in a moment, then the moment would be a, like a, almost like a thing, and then you as a thing could leave it. But you and the moment are synonymous. Yeah? There is no moment without you. Yeah. So there's no way in hell I can ever get out of the moment. So then why would I be driven to try to get into it? That's the freedom. See, when you stop, when, the, when you realize the futility of trying to get out of what you're not in, yeah, or trying to get into what you're not out of, there's a great relief comes over you. And it doesn't come over, it, it doesn't come over you in time, its expression can, but the, the, the solution is of a, of a timeless quality, yeah? When it downloads, it has nothing to do with a, a process, yeah? It is, in other words, it's not a product of a path. It's not an acquirement. It's a download. And the download is of a timeless variety, and yet here, in this place, it will probably express itself through time, yeah? So through time, you'll really get a sense of what, what happened, because it's always happening. Yeah. It's not like it once happened, and now you're experiencing the tremor of it. It's always happening. So what, in a sense, what I was seeking for is always available at all times with no requirement necessary to meet it, because I am it. <laughs> all the formalities, all like the chaperone, all the... Uh, the middleman is taken out of the equation. You are that which you see. What? Yes. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> it gets that simple. <laughs> so, okay, but it tends, tends not to work a lot of times for people. <laughs> so, you go to plan B, which is, let's describe what we're not. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's easily to be described, because you're, you're not that, so it, you're the seeing of that. So we are always seeing, so we can also see what we're not. And what we're not is, let's say, a mental process called selfing, yeah? Of course we're not the selfing, but it's product we take ourselves to be. So the selfing is always inferring there's a noun, yeah? So let's say, just a simple example with a bottle. A bottle's a bottle. But now, when it becomes my bottle, what is that? What is the claiming of that bo bottle used for? To infer that there's someone, yeah? 
the bottle now, it's just the bottle, yeah? But as soon as the mental process claims it and goes, my, that bottle is, has, now has a point or an agenda, which is to point at the one who has it, yeah? So a feeling, when it becomes my feeling, the feeling, though it's a sensation and it's happening, is also used to point that it's happening to someone, yeah? Same thing with thoughts. When there's a feeling of being the thinker, then they're my thoughts. That each thought, no matter what its content, has a, has a use, and that use is to point to or infer yeah, uh, a noun or a someone, the thinker. Yeah. So we're not talking about, all right, I've got to control my thoughts. That's fucking insane. But maybe you're not the thinker of them. Yeah. If you're not the thinker of them, maybe if the my drops off, you may not have much of a struggle with thoughts. But you have a you struggle with my thoughts. Yeah. The my is is the active bonding to this idea of being a self. A self is that feeling of being a long-lasting, independent, separate entity. Yeah. With a lot of uh, very firm, solid assumptions that are totally bogus. Which is, you're the doer. Yes. You're the doer of all your actions. You're in a place that you're real and that's real and this is real. And time is in this place is infused with time. Yes. So there's a beginning, middle, and end. So, and we're usually in a modality of movement called I'm going to do and have myself into being. Yeah. I'm going to do a lot and I'm going to get a lot or have a lot and that's going to make me become something. Yeah. Instead of recognizing being. Yeah? which if you actually sense being, it's already complete in and of itself. It's not in any process to, uh, to uh, culminate or to, or to uh, reach. Yeah? It's already so. So it has no time involved in it. It's already complete. Yes. So the being, and it, the being here maybe has a drive to express, so it expresses through doing and having. It's not achieved by doing and having. Yeah? It's a whole different movement. It's not like I'm going to do my ha and have myself into a state of being. It will be a state of being, but it'll be a mental state of being, which isn't going to last long. <laughs> because mental states of being are, don't have any immunity to other mental states of being. <laughs> so when the other states of mental being arise, you're going to take yourselves to be that also. So if you take yourself to be a mental state of being and you're thinking you're really clear and happy and chilled out, then other mental states of being that you're really anxious and angry are going to arise and it's going to be very difficult to say yes to that one mental state and no to the other mental states. Yeah? It's it's, I don't believe it can happen. So <laughs> this isn't like a, a mental state we're achieving. It's, I would say, a mind state, but not what we call a mental state. I would, state, I would say the state of mind is like they say in some Buddhist circles. The uh, essence of mind is emptiness, yes? The nature of mind is to reflect, and its manifestation is energy. Yeah. So in a way, mind is empty. In other words, it doesn't have any uh, noun in it whatsoever. There's no thing. Its ability is to reflect, so our minds are reflecting right now, yes? When what's happening is, is the mind is reflecting conscious contact. A mental process is injected into the mind, yes? It's a sort of seemingly a dominant mental process. And when the conscious contact is reflected, a story is made about that, and you become the one who's conscious, yeah? In other words, instead of reflecting seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, it's reflecting seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, but the mental process is saying seeing infers a seer, hearing infers a hearer, feeling infers a feeler, yeah? That's a big leap from conscious contact to a mental interpretation. And it's pretty quick if you want to see it in time. You're never going to really pick it up. You just have to entertain the possibility, and sometimes it rings true, yeah? And then, they'll, then because the solution is timeless, it doesn't, have, it doesn't take any time to appear. So there is a pause in this process. That pause, if your mind is resting there, it's like an eternity, yeah? 
it's not playing the game of time. So it may not look like much, but it's all there is. <laughs> yeah. It's like a beautiful space. And in a way, you can live, or actually you are living in that pause. Yeah, The pause between the conscious contact and then the mental process of making it a story. Yeah, There is a huge pause there. And the mind, instead of reflecting all of this activity that I like to call selfing, and then assuming a false image in the reflection, a, a me, yeah, a Paul, a doer, a haver, yeah, instead of that assumption clouding its ability to reflect, yeah, it's now reflecting the conscious contact, yeah, so there's an incredible clear vision when it's seeing consciousness in contact, when it's seeing consciousness in the contact called hearing, when it's seeing consciousness in the contact called feeling, when it's seeing consciousness in the contact called spelling. Yeah? There's a beautiful space there. Yeah. The mental process, which takes time, appears after that space. Yeah? Yet, when the mental process is captures our attention, it assumes that it's before that space. It actually assumes that it's before the conscious contact because it says, I am the one who's in conscious contact. In other words, this, this crazy idea of you now becomes the doer of an unbelievable activity called consciousness. <laughs> it's a pretty big leap. <laughs> and it needs a lot of reinforcement to keep that illusion going because all day consciousness is just booming. You're seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching all the time, as long as you're awake, yeah? So the invitation is always available at all times with no requirement necessary, but you're never going to get it. That's the good news. <laughs> you're not that which is never going to get it. <laughs> End of story. What? I don't have any relevance in this equation? No, you actually don't. In our mathematics, we have our main number, the primary number in our mathematics is one, me, yes? I'm the subject, all subjects. In I believe there's other mathematics, the primary number is zero, nothing. <laughs> yeah? And our head cannot stand nothing, it wants to make it something. Yeah? As soon as it makes it something, that ain't nothing. <laughs> When it's left as nothing, is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> when it's left with something, you're left holding the big heavy bag of spiritual knowledge. Fuck! It's heavy as hell. <laughs> You'll be more bummed out than you were before. <laughs> You'll think you know what's going on. Fuck! It's so painful. You might as well get loaded or something. <laughs> Literally, I see more suffering at spiritual meetings than I've seen on the streets when I was using drugs. At least we knew what was fucking us up. <laughs> we had a program to stop. You guys don't. You can't. We should have like a lot as a Seekers Anonymous. It's just it's insane. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. Just jump from teacher to teacher to teacher to teacher. And uh, yeah, it's, it's like hell. I remember I did a talk down at this retreat. And I got really sick there as soon as I went into the place. So I told them I, I must be allergic to spiritual seeking because <laughs> I got so sick for two days. And I mean, I could, it was palpable. It was us. I don't want nothing. I want something. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're going to get nothing. I know it's nothing, but I'm going to make it something. No, you're not. <laughs> it's going to stay nothing. And it's going to really frustrate the fuck out of you when you keep trying to make it something. It's not doing it on purpose. It's all on you because you're busy trying to make nothing into something. This is the message. It's just, it's just, it's already known. We're just tickling it like a catalyst. Yeah, just like, um, I always like to use the idea of a car that breaks down. And, uh, so you know a little bit about cars, and it, so you open up the hood and you take the air filter on. They don't have them anymore, but my cars do. <laughs> They're all old. <laughs> so you take the air filter, and then there's the carburetor. And it's not computerized. And then you take a, some gas, and you just put a couple of drops of gas in, and you pump it, yeah, and then it starts up a lot of time. Now, what would happen if you stood over there and kept pouring gas in? 
it would flood it, yeah? In other words, this message is like a catalyst. It's not like something to be studied, yeah? This life is a big, is, is a big enough study hall. You're going to be, a lot of lessons are going to be revealed to you without you even looking for them, yeah? You're already in the study hall. But it's not meant to be studied in my sense, yeah? It's meant to be entertained, yeah? To entertain the possibility. I may not be that. That, what that? It isn't a solid that. It's an inferred that. It's an assumed that, yeah? It's like a vague sense of self. Is it really so? Or is, or that, is that vague, vague sense of self being produced by a mental process? Yeah? And if it is... Maybe you're not that. And if you're not that, then you can truly be free from it. Okay? If the identification as self is in place, you, you can entertain freedom, but you can only entertain freedom defined by the problem. You'll entertain freedom about, you know, for you, yeah? not from you. Yeah? You'll have a drive for freedom, but it will be distorted or hijacked and it will actually cause more bondage, that drive for freedom. Because you're trying to get something for you. This is the app, it's like this is freedom from, in a sense, yeah? It's not freedom as, it's actually freedom from. And that freedom is inherently so. So, in a way, the nobility of your endeavors are mute, yeah? There's no nobility in your endeavors. In a way, they're probably producing tons of frustration and seeming confusion. But you can't feign the ease and relaxation, or that would be another process. Yeah. Now I'm going to do practice doing nothing. It doesn't fucking work. There's just a giving up in a sense. You just give up. Yeah. You drop the rock, and then stuff is revealed. And in those revelations or those downloads. You get to know it by finding out. You do not get to know it by studying it. Yeah? You do not get to know it by poring over texts. You get to know it by finding out. Yeah? So, the position of mind, like in Zen they would say, a very high form of mind is I don't know. In that position of I don't know, or stance, it's not a position, it's just a stance or an attitude, in that I don't know, then you find out. It makes it revelatory, yeah? And that finding out isn't claimed and then, and then acknowledged and neutered by the mental process and put on your little spiritual mantle. It actually does something. It actually transforms how you travel here. And to me, traveling lighter becomes the norm, yeah? I mean, the proof is in the freaking pudding. You don't know the truth and hope it's going to finally work for you. It's working for you, and that's how you know it, in a sense, Yeah? You know the seeming problem from the solution. From the solution. You're not trying to seek the solution from the problem. That's a big problem. That's a huge problem. Because you never see that it is. We don't see it. It's tricky. You actually believe it's quite noble to seek for the truth. But I don't believe it is, really. It's like a mental nobility, but it's not producing the goods. A lot of us have fallen upon the message and that the, the seeking drive is so much you just move on from it. It's already been revealed to us. Many of us. We've heard it. Yeah. Let it in. Entertain it. Walk around. See how it goes. Yeah. And if that's not possible, then, and if your houses are on fire, don't use philosophy or that you're not a person and there's no house. Get a pail of water, you know? <laughs> Just be able to see red as red and blue as blue and respond. Don't think there is no red when it's burning the hell out of you. You know, fucking get a pail of water. I should know better. Who the fuck is that? So I was, you know, going into recovery, they informed me about the activity of the problem. And it hit me so strongly that that was so, that it made it really an indelible impression. And it became a great starting point, yeah? And for a while, I kept 
I didn't realize that I was the stills, the state that was was dominant was self was trying to get out of self. Yeah. It brought, I got a little more space in my prison, yes. The degrees of hell that I was in got lesser, so it seemed like a really big upgrade, which it was. <laughs> but there was still this dilemma that self was trying to get out of self, which is an impossibility. If self, the feeling of self, is actually a product of a mental process, yeah? In other words, without the mental process, there would be no feeling of self. Then that feeling of self cannot leave what's making it, yeah? In other words, you're not going to transcend self as a self. Because there is no self. It's a, produ- it's a product of a mental process, the feeling of being one. Yeah? If the mental process shut down, you wouldn't have a feeling of being a self. That's what happens when people have extreme accidents and stuff. They have a whole new, the mind has to make a whole new personality. Because they don't have any sense. They don't know who their loved ones are. They fucking have, it's all gone. It's made up. Yeah. This whole dream is held together by a mental process and an interpretation. Yeah. So that is never going to get out of that. <laughs> it's impossible. So the beautiful thing is if I'm not self, that's the feeling or the experience of being out of self. Yeah, it's not the way we thought it would be, but that's the feeling I believe we thought it was going to be. Yeah, the feeling of getting out of self is a realization you're not in self. Yeah, simple as that. And the selfing will continue, but now, you know, the the cat's out of the bag. You've seen it. Yeah, and maybe the emphasis hasn't shifted completely yet. So, but you'll see, in time, the expression will probably get stronger, and there'll be a stronger immunity to what you're not. And then, then instead of being self-centered, your mind will be centered. It's a total. It's the mind is centered here on something or nothing. Yeah. So, self-centered or centered. All we're doing is weakening the self-centered by questioning its center, which is self, and then the mind maybe very quickly, maybe slowly, is going to shift into centeredness. And in a sense, your life's going to be the better for it. You'll just travel a lot lighter. Yeah. I mean, in the mental process, there's so much emphasis on what's not happening, isn't it? I mean, most of the thoughts, if we follow them with our attention, they don't lead here, they lead to a mental there. Yeah? Some idea of next year. And yet, we're, the mind is so powerful. You know, that idea of Jesus raising someone who's dead to life is a pretty big miracle. But at least Lazarus was alive at one time. Then he died. We're raising something out of nothing. We're going into a possibility in a mind stream called time that something could happen a year from now and then glomming onto it Why? Because, see, the beautiful thing with mind addicted to self, it has an object to obsess over, yeah? It's not identified as the body. It thinks it has a body. It probably doesn't even like the idea of a body. But it's its only way to to, uh, continue its supposed existence. So it takes this fixed object called this and places it somewhere else, and therefore that somewhere else that's not happening seems important enough to seem to be happening. Because it's going to be about you. If you were just going two years from now about a random situation, you are interest, You couldn't hold it. Your interest and attention would always be drawn back to what's happening. But when we're addicted to this idea of being me, if I think about me two years from now, it can hold my interest and attention. Yeah? I can be totally unconscious to what's happening here and be totally up the ass of self over there. See the power of it? Why not? If I'm not that, you have immunity to those mental travelings. Your little time traveling. You start, the mind just starts honoring what's happening now. Yeah? Its whole value system shifts. And this is where the joy of expression is occurring. Yeah? It's not occurring in the possibility of a future expression or a lovely memory of a past expression. It's this expression. But it's difficult to get into the moment if you believe you could be out of the moment. (laughs) 
with me the way I have the senses that I the first assumption isn't bought then the whole story seems bogus if the first assumption is bought then it seems like it's really good yeah this could this is true I, I feel like I'm out of the moment don't I yeah I'm fucking really out of the moment yeah so where's those books about how to get into the moment yeah and then on and then it's off and running but what would happen if the assumption that you could be out of the moment was seen to be totally impossible snip right there it takes absolutely no time and there you go you're right where you already are but now the mind's reflecting it yes now you're in on it ah so what if something's not happening and you realize it's not happening what more is there needed to do <laughs> if it's not happening there's nothing to do about it <laughs> but no but's when the world starts but oh i really feel the light now but next week i probably won't see you just rot you just let the thief into your house again swear to god just because it sounds like you and looks like you it has caught blanche it's coming in robbing you of interest and attention all day oh no let's work let's swear to god it's a call the police <laughs> there's a there's a burglar in my house what does it look like just like me <laughs> then arrest them yourself <laughs> seriously the interest and attention is just here because this is all there is the mental process <laughs> sucks it into there and then produces hellacious ideas of what could possibly fall upon you and yet the body gets electrocuted for a crime it never committed all day <laughs> <laughs> jesus our nervous system shot the mind is got so neurotic now it's overboard it's like having a marathon runner in a closet it's driving itself fucking crazy seriously the neuroses are popping up new ones every day how perverse can the mind get well put it in a very small cubicle <laughs> you know jesus it has an incredible ability to entertain mind it does if you give it like remember when you were a kid i remember i was sharing it last night i was 10 years old 11 years old i was walking through my school and a pretty girl said hello to me. So I went home and wondered what she meant by it for about 5 hours. Just self-centeredness. So for 5 hours my mind entertained all of these things what it could mean. Could you imagine if you if you unleashed that att- that attention and mind from the slave to yourself what it could entertain now in this spaciousness, yeah, in this moment, in this in its own space what it could entertain? find out it can entertain like crazy you can obsess to your dead man here you know what i mean i've seen a lot of people obsessed with themselves to their fucking dead either through drinking or suicide they just can't call off the dogs and you know we all want we don't want suffering but we want it our way yeah if it doesn't fit our little parameters of how it should be we'll say no to some of the most beautiful invitations we really will and keep on shopping until we find one that's just the way we want it and there ain't one <laughs> it's going to be an irritant <laughs> it's going to it's going to fucking rub some things raw it's that's what it does It has no personal opinions about you. <laughs> Be gentle. <laughs> Don't crack that little crystal store illusion I have. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, don't step there. <laughs> I've been completely avoiding this for 20 years. Oh, right in the face. What? <laughs> That's true compassion with no compassion. You give the self in one inch it takes a mile. It fucking does. So, there you have it. <laughs> Any questions today? We could go on and on but it's sort of like beating a dead horse, eh?
it got in there. So that's all I needed. That's the point. The mailman doesn't deliver the letter and then stand there for four hours, you know. <laughs> Let's see. I want to see him read it. I wanna, did they get it the way I know it was? No, fuck it. It's, your job's over. Your seat assignment has been completed. Let's go to Chivo's. <laughs> get on with the day. <laughs> No, let's sit and meditate for three hours. Fuck it. No, don't. 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 Maybe it's... Maybe if you gave it... I don't know. It's tricky. Yeah? You know, even you used to think that if I just really concentrated on something. But I got a feeling that doesn't work a lot of times either. This is more like you get it, and then it's more like a, your aperture, instead of being tightened and twisted... To focus in, it actually focuses out, you know, just opens up. And it's more like a very uh, relaxed awareness, not a focused, concentrated laser beam, but a very dis- diffused and very spread, yeah? Like this, like. Yeah. And that's the thing. You come out of self centeredness, is the aperture is like this, and then it starts moving back, yeah? So here you think. It's still you, 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 it's still you. you. Oh, <laughs> I ain't that you, I ain't that you, I ain't that you. You know what I mean? <laughs> it hits a point where the camera, seriously, is in its rightful position. Back here. <laughs> and you are never going to be behind the camera again, seemingly or not. <laughs> What's actually first and the first and the premiere gets crowned to be that consciousness, yeah. not the camera, you know, that it's moving through, but what's moving through yeah. starts getting honored. And in funny way, when that's honored, the camera does a lot better. Yeah, you got here right in time, Jack. It's over. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> he only needs like 30 seconds. It's quick. 15 seconds. Yeah. Just, he comes for the prayer and that's it. So. <laughs> Any questions today? One, two, three. All right. Good. <laughs> Where's the Buddha? What? Oh, I hit, Mark took it. Uh, no. Yeah, I got to get it. I only spoke for 33 minutes. You want more, don't you? Oh, I know it. This wasn't enough. I'm driving all the way from Livermore. I know it. All right. I can squeeze out a few more minutes. Would that be all right? <laughs> Will that be enough for you? <laughs> I don't. It'd be, it could be like beating a dead horse, really. You've already heard it before. You can feel it here, right? That's all your mind needs. It's sort of like a, it keys in, and then the mind does the rest. Yeah. It keys in. We get together. It produces a certain field. The mind remembers, not remembers, just senses, and then it, you know, it fires its own little pistons. Didn't knew. I knew. Yes. I know. No. 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 They're all very well trained. They, they, they know not to ask any more. So, where is it? Does intentionality and, and goals? I mean, it's your, it was your goal conscious and, and intentionality manifesting what, you know, what the self is wanting. To be, um, let go of all that. Well, you can't let go of all that. What happens is when you realize you can't let go of that, you travel looser with it. You know? you know what I mean? Instead of you being the dealer of the cards, you, there's a surrendering of being the dealer and the cards get reshuffled. Yeah? And intentions happen here and goals happen here. We're in time. But it doesn't mean there's someone who has the goal. That's the leap. That's the mental leap. Yeah? That's how it verifies itself. 
there's an undeniability that something has happened. Yeah? And it's sort of like when you see car racing, you get in the drag, you get behind one car. So there's the mental process. There's an undeniability that conscious is in contact, consciousness. Yeah? You're seeing something. You have a feeling you have this and that. But it sort of drags on that undeniability, and then it makes this assumption that it's undeniable, that the one who's doing it is undeniable. Yeah? It uses the doing to verify a story that it's undeniable as the doer, because it can't see anything without a noun. So when there's a recognition of an activity, it always assumes there's got to be someone behind it. Yeah? And if he can't say it's you or me, then it's God. It's some other noun. So there's always a noun thrown into the verbing of consciousness and contact. Yes? There's always nouns in there. So goals happen here. Intentions occur. We're just questioning, is there anyone who has the intention? Is there anyone who has the goal? Yeah? We're not. I have no opinions about goals and intentions. Yeah? Because I may not have an intention that's very strong where you are. So who am I to say about intentions? What I'm pointing is, is there someone who has the intention, the goal? Yeah? Is there someone that's doing the intention, or is there just intention happening? See? Yeah? The ability, you are the seeing, or let's, if you don't believe you're the seeing, then there is seeing available. Let it reveal. Yeah? Look at it and just maybe ask the question, well, who is the one who has the goal? It's not opinions about having goals or not having goals. That's like stepping in the mud. Yeah? As soon as you step into the arena, then the mud wrestling occurs. Yeah? We're not talking about intentions, good or bad, goals, good or bad. We're standing outside the mud and say, who is it that has the intention? I found, like, you can have dreams occur here and all this, but you tend to wear them loosely when it's not you. When there's a you, the you has tons of meaning it has about that goal. In other words, the you is constantly in the process of becoming. Yeah? Selfing is the most unfulfilled desire of all desires. It's a mental process wanting to be a self, which it can never be. Yeah? So it's always selfing. So it's always, its inherent desire, which is very strong, is always thwarted. And without, with, and it doesn't admit to that truth, so then what happens is it seeks to get relief from the unfulfilled desire of being self, because it's never going to be one, yeah? So now addictions form to get relief from the first addiction. Yeah? Selfing is like this. You're always either trying to become something or unbecome something you think you are, yeah? And all your goals are wrapped around with that idea. All, everything has been given meaning from that one point of meaning giving, which is I'm becoming and unbecoming, yes? So I'm, 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 today, I'm trying to get into the moment. That's me, I'm trying to unbecome someone who's out of the moment, yes? All of it, it's always rooted back to that, yeah? It's desiring to become and unbecome. And it can't become fulfilled with those desires because you're not anything to unbecome and you're not anything to become something. Yeah? It's a frustration that begets more frustration. And it compounds here in this, in this place. So the first frustration, if not seen, produces a geometric progression of more frustration, more frustration, more frustration, more neuroses, more addictions, more this and more that to get relief from this, 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 instead of seeing, I'm not that. Yeah? If I'm not that, which is trying to become or unbecome, then maybe I am that which is. <gasps> What? Maybe... What? <laughs> I am that which is? Yeah. So where'd be all your noble goals of becoming that which is if you're already that which is? You, hopefully, you'd see a lot of people, they choose to go for the goals. They'd rather forget that they are that and they'd rather have the desire or the drive to become that. Good luck. You know, I don't want to... You know, To me, it's a waste of time. I would just rather go, am I that or not? If I'm not that, if I am not that which is trying to become this, but I am this, there you go. What's going to happen when that dawns on you? An immunity to all of that is going to arise, yeah? You won't be fooled again, like the Who song. 
It's the same old boss, just like the, the new boss is the same like the old boss. Selfing is always taking on new roles, but it's the same theme. Yeah. It's driven by claiming. By its claiming, it gets permission to give meaning to everything it's claimed, and it writes up a story about this place, yes? And you are the living epitome of that story that's based on fucking sand. And it's actually quicksand. And we're sinking into that story, wanting relief constantly, but you can't get out of something you're not in. Why do you... I shot tons of cocaine. Tons, a lot of cocaine. Not tons, but a lot. I shot a lot of cocaine, which is a pretty strong rush, yeah? And I would match my drug use with any devotional person in the history of spirituality. I was a complete devotee to cocaine. I loved it. I gave up everything for it. I lived under its influence every day. I would take what was mine and give it. I would take what was yours and give it to it. I was a total 24-7 devotee. Guess what? It was never satiated. I never hit a point where I had one shot and I put down the syringe like a holy symbol and thank you. You've delivered me to a, a certain nirvana of cocaine use. I never need to do coke again. No, it never ends. Addictions never end. That's the dilemma, yes? By the, by the object of the addiction, you're never going to have the addiction end by consuming the object of the addiction. You're never going to have enough because that's not the addiction which is trying to be met. It's the addiction of mind to the idea of being a self which it can never fulfill. It cannot become what it's thinking itself to be all day. It's an impossibility. You're prior to that. Consciousness, awareness, spirit, whatever you want to call it, you are of that. You're not in this. You're in this in appearance, but you're of that. Like Jesus says, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. Yeah. You're in this world of thingness, but you're not of thingness. That drive to be a thing will never be fulfilled. And when that's not fulfilled, then it seeks relief from that unfulfillment. Shoots drugs, does this, sex, pornography, money, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And the mind just keeps generating movement. And there's no way an agitated state is going to recognize peace. No fucking way. As soon as this claim peace, it would make it unpeaceful. That's what it does, doesn't it? An agitated mind has a free sample of peace. What does it do? It uses that idea, that moment, I was really at peace then, to beat the living hell out of itself for the next 30 years. Doesn't it? See it. It's there, to, it's revealing itself all day. You can see the little activity of the beast from head to toe. It's available. Ding! You're not that. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, what a relief. <laughs> the first, the first, I've gotten relief from the first addiction. Therefore, I don't have many other addictions, except for insulated jackets right now. <laughs> and those are little games the mind plays. In. But I mean, the first addiction has, I have been relieved of that bondage for the need to be liberated. What you are has no need to be liberated. What you are not is constantly looking for liberation. <laughs> Shit. So, yes. Now you've had enough. 43 minutes. <laughs>